Hello, this is Kiwi Crash Course number 10. In this video, I want to try and address something that sometimes seems to cause a relatively large amount of confusion for new users. That is layout. The general ideas here aren't too hard, but I often see questions about why widgets are positioned the way they are, how Kiwi's named layout widget should be used, and what to do if Kiwi doesn't have a layout widget that you want, things like that. To do this, I'm going to ask the question, what if Kiwi just didn't have any layout classes? How do we position widgets then? What problems would we face, and how would we solve them? Actually, it turns out we can handle things pretty well using just Kiwi's inbuilt abilities and mechanisms, and we'll see in the few minutes, uh, next uh, the next few minutes, how to do that. To start with, let's just make a very basic program and see what happens. So we need a couple of widgets from Kiwi.ux. Label import label, and let's use a image. Uh, we haven't seen image before, but unsurprisingly, it just displays an image on your screen. Let's also do from kiwi.lang import builder and from kiwi.base import run touch app. We saw these last time again. The builder is for loading kiwi language uh, strings in a Python file. And run touch app just allows us to run a widget with a simple default app rather than constructing our own app class. So that's fine for a simple example. We'll do builder.load string and then we'll put our kiwi code there in a moment. Class, I'll just call it root widget, which can be a label, no behavior on the Python side, and we'll finish the program by doing run touch app with one of our root widgets. We can then add a little behavior here with a rule of the root widget. We can give it a text, uh, the background, font size 150, and we'll give it a child widget. We can use our image for this image takes a source, which is the, the file name to your image if you have one. So I'm going to use colors.png, that's one I prepared earlier. And I also said a couple of other properties, allow stretch true, by default this is uh, false, but by setting it to true it means the image can stretch to fill the whole widget even if it's larger than the image itself in number of pixels. And I'll also set keep ratio to false. That's a similar thing. Uh, by default, the image's aspect ratio is always maintained, so uh, the image isn't stretched to fill the widget if the widget isn't the same shape as the image. In this case, I've set it to false, so the weight ratio doesn't have to be kept, and it will just stretch it however it needs to do to fill the uh, root, is it to fill the image widget. So we can look at what that looks like. So there we go, just a very simple program. The root widget, as usual, fills the screen because it's used by Kivi to fill the window. Uh, in this case, it says the background, so you can see it clearly in the middle there. The interesting thing is that our image widget, although it's a child of the root widget, doesn't have its layout set in any way at all. It has the default position for a widget of 0, 0, and the default size of a widget of just 100 pixels square. So 100 in the X and 100 in the Y direction. What it doesn't have is any kind of position or uh, size modification based on the position of the root widget. Uh, that is, merely being a child of another widget doesn't imply anything about your position. We can set things like its position and size manual if you want to. We could set position 200, 300 and leave its size the same. Then you can see it's moved, it's gone to 200 by 300 pixels from the bottom left. Uh, and that's a basic way of laying things out. We could also, of course, re refer to the root widget in these rules. So we could do size, could be root dot width times not by five and root dot height times not by two. Oops. And of course, as usual, this creates a Kiwi language rule, so things will automatically be updated. And as I resize the window, our new widget gets bigger or smaller to uh, keep fulfilling those parameters. That's the first thing. That's the the most basic way that you can lay out a widget, and it's very useful without doing anything else at all. Sometimes this is simply the best way to lay out images in your applications. By referring to other widgets using Kiwi properties, you already get all the behavior you might need. However, it's not the be-all and end-all, and there are other more complex things that cause problems. For instance, what happens if we add two images? So let's say I want the first image to take up half the screen on the left and the other one half the screen on the right. So let's add another image. Same properties, except I'll use colors too for the file name, just another image with colors I happen to have. Now we have to set the positions and sizes appropriately. This one can have the same position as the root widget, root.position. 
but its size needs to be half the width and all the height, so it's going to take up half the screen uh, horizontally, but the full screen vertically. This one needs the same width and the same height, but its position, instead of being root.pos, has to be root.x plus 0.5 times root.width and root.y. That is, uh, the position is the same height as the root widget, but the same horizontal distance plus half of the root widget's width. You can see what that looks like. So there you go, exactly what you might expect. Now we have two widgets, one takes up the left of the screen, and the other takes up the right, and as before we can resize them, and Kiwi Language has made the bindings we need so that the widgets are automatically updated to continue being the same proportional sizes. Again, that's fine, but things are already a little bit more complicated, and now we have more problems that we're going to have if we want to, say, duplicate this layout somewhere else. Say we wanted a different root widget somewhere else, a different instance of our root widget, we'd have to copy this code to do the same thing if we wanted to get the same positions. Especially if, say, we didn't have images but had different widgets with uh, maybe we wanted slightly different things to be done to them. Or what if we wanted things to be dynamic? If we want to add another widget and have these all automatically resized to take up a third of the widget rather than a half? That kind of thing we can't do here. Okay, we're shrewd Python programmers, so we can still tackle that problem. We can simply say, what if our root widget knows how to do that layout? If we write a function that does everything properly, you know, keeps track of all the different widths, and sets the positions appropriately, all we have to do is make sure we call that function whenever the root widget changes. We're still not using any particular features of Kiwi uh, different layout widgets, we're only doing this entirely from scratch, but we all still have the basic ideas we need, and we can simply write down the code we want. So let's do that. We're going to have a function called, say, do layout. Oops. And it's going to have to keep track of a few things, I guess. It's going to have a number of children equals len. Self.children. Self.children is just a list of all the child widgets. It's going to need to know its own width. Self.width. And that means that the width of the child is going to be width over number of children. Seems reasonable. We're also going to need a list of positions for the children to be. Uh, that's going to just be range 0 self. self width width per child. So that's going to be a list of integers for the individual positions of the child's widgets. And now we can simply say for position child in zip positions children child dot and now we have to set a few different things. Child dot height is self dot height. The child height always has to track the root widget height so if the window is resized the child still has to get bigger. Uh, so our layout takes care of that child.x is going to be self.x plus position. So this, that takes this, uh, if you haven't seen the syntax before, it just means that for every position in the list and the associated child, we have the position as a proportion of the root widget, and we simply add the root widget's own x position to that. And child.y is self.y. And that seems to be the three things we need. I don't know, hang on, child.width is width per child. So there we go, the child's position and height are both set to appropriate properties, uh, vertically the same size as its parent widget, and horizontally proportional to the number of children, so that however many there are, they always fit in. Seems very basic. Now all we need to do is actually make sure this function is called at all the right times. So anytime anything would affect the position of our root widget, or the size of our root widget, we'd have to call this do layout and have them rearranged. Or if we add a new widget to this widget, then we'll need to call do layout again. So if we add another child, we want to resize the previous ones to allow the new one to fit in. That's all fine. We've seen how to do it before. We can do def on size. So catch the arguments. Uh, self dot do layout. You can achieve this in a few different ways, but it's just a simple one I'll do here. We'll do the same for on position. Oops. So that means that whenever the size or position of the root widget changes, it's going to call that do layout function and reset its child sizes and positions in case they need to be reset. We also need to do add widget self uh, arcs, widget. Now we need to call the normal add widget function, so just normal syntax here. Root widget self dot add widget widget. So that calls exactly the normal add widget function, the widget's been added to uh, our widget here. 
but then we can call self dot do layout and again that will take the new widget and give it an appropriate position and size including rearranging the previous ones if we need to as we thought we also need to do that for removing a widget so that's the four basic things that could affect things. Uh, as soon as this widget changes at all, we call this do layout, all the widgets are reset, and they'll always track the appropriate uh, layout, depending on how many there are, and the size and position of the root one. Seems reasonable, so let's see if it works. Hang on, we first have to make a couple of changes. We now no longer need to set a manual position and size, because that's going to be done manually, uh, done automatically. But everything else is the same. And there we are, the same behavior we had before but now in a very general way, so I can still resize the window and have them resize and so on. But this isn't uh, limited by a single specific Kiwi language setting I wrote down. We've got this general do layout method that will work for a dynamic number of widgets and for any different type of widget, and we can use, reuse this throughout our program without reusing any of this code. Uh, I can even prove that it works by just adding, say, another image. Let's repeat the first image. Oops. So there you go, now I've got three images, and again, everything works. They're all sized proportionally, taking up a third of the screen, and continue to have all the right bindings set. Now this is the real, I would say, general way for laying things out in Kiwi. You can see that once you have this general idea, as soon as you have some rule you want to apply to the layout of your children, you can make a widget like this one with all these, keeping an eye on the size and the position, you could subclass something like this. And all you have to do is replace this do layout method with the rule that you want, and everything will always be maintained whenever anything important changes, the layout will be refreshed, and your children will be positioned appropriately. The key here is that this is a Kiwi layout. This is almost exactly how it's even implemented behind the scenes, uh, nothing magic at all about it. And the idea is solely that it provides some useful rule for setting out your widgets. Now that we've seen the kind of the justification it made sense when we built this, you can see more of the details of how you can use layouts. For a start, you don't have to use them. You can just use a rule that we originally used in this program to simply set manual positions for your widgets if you want to. You can use proportional things by referring to other Kiwi properties. But then as soon as you get more complicated, it's often very useful to fall back to a Kiwi layout. Kiwi has several things like a box layout, that's basically what I've done here. Or there's uh, the float layout we've seen before, lets you position things arbitrarily. Different things like a stack layout or a grid layout for putting things in grids. Kiwi's layouts do do more things they have a more robust way of keeping track of the size and position changes. And they also have this size hint that we've seen before. So in our case, all the children are tied to exactly the same horizontal height. But using the size hint system, one of them can say it wants more width than the others, and they'll be sized proportionately, including that weighting factor. Uh, but you can play with that if you want to. That means as soon as you have some rule that you want to apply to all your children, you can subclass Kiwi's layout. You don't have to care about anything else. All it's really doing is keeping track of all these, refreshing its layout for you and you simply rank down your layout in its do layout method. Then this layout, this method will be called whenever anything changes, and your rule will always be applied. That's the real value of a layout. Uh, it means that you only have to think about your layout once. You write it down, uh, and it already has all the methods and things for taking care of the rest of the process. That's essentially everything for now, I think. I didn't talk specifically about any layouts. But I really wanted to cover the general idea behind them, because I think it is a bit confusing that there are these layout classes, but it's unclear whether you have to use them or whether they're the only way to do things. And you can see here, they certainly aren't the only way to do things. Or alternatively, if they're lacking you and you do want to use one, you can just create your own. It's very easy to do so. All you have to do is know which method to subclass uh, to apply your own rule. I might talk about specific widgets in a few future videos, and do let me know if there's something in particular you'd like me to talk about. In the meantime, I think the next video will cover Kiwi's clock and animation, something I haven't talked about before. But this lets you very easily apply particular animation functions to properties in your Kiwi language. So you can easily animate things like positions and sizes or whatever um, to change lots of different uh, appearances of your widgets very easily and using a pleasantly large range of inbuilt functions. So for now though, thanks for watching.